guys, welcome back. We have another dermatologist skincare reaction. We also have board certified dermatologist, Dr. Annie Chu. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for being back here. So she's got her own practice called the Derm Institute in Redondo Beach. If you're out that way, definitely check out what she's doing. We'll leave all her information below in the description box. Perfect. Today, we are looking at Anna. She is 21 mm -hmm. and she is dealing with acne, but she's gonna get into it. Good. And I'm curious to hear what you have to say. This video is a prime example of why I think it's important for these videos specifically to have a board certified dermatologist like you, a real expert. And I'm not saying I'm not an expert, guys, <laughs> but I'm more of a skincare enthusiast and it's one thing for me to judge a person, especially a celebrity or an influencer's skincare routine mm -hmm. and talk to you guys about ingredients and how it's working with the skin type. But when there's an underlying skin issue, I do feel like it's important to see an actual professional for that stuff, right? Yeah, and I think it's great because then, you know, your viewers can relate to some of the things that everyday people struggle with. Not yeah. everyone has perfect skin, you yeah, know? Yeah, it's true, it's true. So you wanna get started? You wanna see what Anna's dealing yeah, with? Yeah, let's right. see. Hi, my name is Anna. I'm 21 years old and I live in Germany. It's a skincare video and at first I'm gonna show you my skin. I have a combination to oily skin type with an oily T-zone and my main concern is, as you can see, acne. I have whiteheads and sometimes hormonal pimples. And now I'm gonna show you what I use for my skincare. Is she not cute as a button? She's adorable. I want to be like, mm, I know. love you. So she's saying that she's dealing with acne and whiteheads and sometimes hormonal acne. So this is when I think it's very important to have a professional like you to look at skin like this because you know, she's got something going, like usually you can look at someone who says they have acne and if it's like in a specific area, you could be like, oh, that's hormonal or the type mm -hmm. of acne. But this is one where I wouldn't even tell her go see an esthetician. Like some people I know when they, they tell me they're dealing with acne and I look at them, I'm like, oh, go see this esthetician. Three months, facials, you'll be cleared up. Yeah. But then there are cases like this where I, I see all these little things happening around her skin where I'm like, I think you need to see a dermatologist. So I agree. Think? I think she's got a little bit of a mixed picture. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I think it's hard for me to diagnose off YouTube. Like I won't be able to ask her some mm -hmm. prompting questions here. But what I see is not typical hormonal acne. She may have additional hormonal breakouts, but it's a little bit beyond that. It's, it's you know, there's more involvement, uh -huh. mostly of the central face, and there's some degree of underlying redness. So I'd venture to say she, let's see what she says, but she could have just regular acne, but she's a little older for regular acne as well. I think she could have some combo of acne and rosacea. So rosacea is an inflammatory skin condition and there's all these different subtypes. There's subtypes that are just characterized by chronic redness and then there's actually an inflammatory subtype that is characterized by little inflamed bumps that look almost exactly like acne, so it's really hard. And frankly, we have a diagnosis called acne rosacea because it's a little bit of a spectrum mm. to kind of um, put these people in one category. And my guess is she falls in that spectrum. And I think it's extra hard for them because typically you associate acne with being very oily mm -hmm. and you'll lean yourself towards really stripping, drying products because like you're trying to dry it out. And like a lot of exfoliators, that kind of stuff. Exactly, but the problem is acne rosacea is acne on very sensitive, easily irritable skin. Right. And you can terribly inflame that and cause yourself a little bit of more inflammation, dry out inflammation, dry out kind of cycle. Yeah, and, and you know inflammation's bad because that leads to so much more problems down the line. Down the line, skin. yeah. And she could be, because she's only 21, There, there's, this might be an acne dominant, but there's underlying rosacea skin. Uh -huh. She will actually probably veer towards that no matter what. Yeah. So it's probably good to look at the routine and make sure that we're setting her up for success even later on down okay. the line. So I do want to point out, we do always follow up with everybody really quickly um, before we actually get on camera just to make sure we ask some of these questions. She has been to a dermatologist in the past year, she said. I think they had given her clindamycin and benzoyl peroxide. Clindamycin yeah. is a topical antibiotic with a little benzoyl peroxide. She said they gave her a lighter percentage and it wasn't that effective. And they also gave her something called azelaic acid, yep. which you'll find in some over-the-counter products, but it prescription-wise, here in the US, it's called Phenacea, and it's actually a cream that's prescribed for rosacea. So my guess is that her dermatologist in Europe might have been struggling with which bucket to put her in as well. Got it. Because that sounds like, 
you know, that kind of an in-between regimen because there's not a retinoid in there, right? Yeah. And rosacea patients don't do well with retinoids. Retinoids, because yeah. they're sensitive. Very sensitive. And this is why you're saying it's also difficult for you to just look at her video and be yeah. like, what is going on? So I, I venture to say she's probably one of those people that could potentially hop around to a few dermatologists before she finds a solution, right? Yeah, and I think she does need to see a derm because there are some characteristics that are just better seen in person. And then there are triggers, like, is this worse in the sun? Is this worse with, like, stress? When you drink hot fluids, do you tend to flush? Those are trigger questions to rosacea. So if she answered yes to any of those, I'd, I'd definitely be like, okay, this is, like, definitely an acne rosacea versus a classic acne, which we actually call acne vulgaris. Vulgaris is a word for common in medicine. So acne vulgaris is, like, the classic acne that we all think of the 16-year-old with the whiteheads on the face. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm guessing that C, that she will struggle with trying to balance oil and sensitivity, which is very, very difficult. So let's see how she does. All right, let's do this. For my nighttime skincare, I start with double cleansing my skin. I use this Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. And as a second step, I use this Cetaphil Cleansing Lotion. So she uses the Clinique Take the Day Off Balm. I know a lot of people love this balm. It works really well. It mm -hmm. does take your makeup off. I don't know how much makeup she's wearing during the day. And then she's going into just good old, good old fashioned Cetaphil. Gentle Cetaphil. Uh huh. So what do you think about the combination for her? I love the Clinique but I don't know for her. Clinique, I find, is a skincare brand that my younger patients with oily skin sort of geared towards because yeah. it was marketed towards like a younger Estee Lauder type of thing, right? And I find that people then become really bonded to it whether or not they have oily skin. I mean, I'm one of those people. I started when I was 12. Yes. My mom took me to the counter. Yeah. She was like, It's like a luxury at that get, point. Yeah, she needs to get onto a routine. Let's see. So it's got a little safflower. So it's... It's basically a hydrating balm. I think this is a good product for her. It's gentle, it's non-stripping, and skin barrier health is the most important thing for her. Right. So I think actually that with the Cetaphil is a really smart combination. Cetaphil is one of those things, like it's a product that we always just kind of have in our household. We mm -hmm. put it like in showers and stuff like that for guests or if like, I forget to like transfer my cleanser to the shower. It's just sitting there and I'll use it. I feel like it's just one of those things. Dermatologists always are like, yes, it feels fine for almost everybody basically. Yeah. But I put it in a video once and there was a lot of backlash about it because they were like, it's not good for your pH levels and blah, blah, blah. What are your thoughts about that as a dermatologist? It's the kind of product that derms recommend because it's been well studied to not really irritate skin types like rosacea, or even if you are post laser, it's actually very, very gentle for those types, like even after resurfacing procedures. So we think it's gentle. We don't think it really is a treatment cleanser. Some cleansers are a little bit, pack a little more punch, I think. Yeah. What, what do you think you about that whole thing when people say like the pH level of a cleanser? I think you're disrupting your pH no matter what when you're washing your face. I've said this. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that. Like you can splash water on your face and mess up your pH. So I think you're going to disrupt pH to a certain degree. And hopefully the idea of a good skincare regimen is that you are replenishing it back. Sometimes, not every single day, I use this Biore baking powder. It's a powder peeling that contains citric acid in it. She's using a Biore baking soda cleansing scrub, which there are like three words in that whole thing that like freak me out without even, without, I'm just judging it from mm -hmm. the title, the name of the product, baking soda <laughs> scrub. Words, freaks me out. Biore, yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're strong, they're yeah, strong. They're strong. The citric acid, like she said. A little fragrance and menthol. Menthol, no. Menthol. You guys, menthol, peppermint oil, all of those like refreshing, Ingredients I feel like trick people into thinking that they're clean because it feels like that. It leaves that, that minty yeah. effect, yeah. but they're huge irritants and actually dehydrators of the skin. Yeah. I'm super against them. Even on the body, you'll often find them in like bug bite medications and stuff. And that's just like a mental trick. It actually is not doing anything. So I'm actually against it sort of in general as an ingredient. Yeah. I really don't like this product for her personally. Yeah, I don't know if I like it for anybody, to be honest. If somebody told me they were using this, I'd probably be like, mm. What do you think of baking soda? People ask me about baking soda all the time. I think she likes it because when you mix baking soda with water, it makes this kind of like milky fizzy. paste, fizzy thing. And it actually does 
pull out oils. So I think if you believe you have very oily skin, which most people with acne-like bumps, now in this case, I think we have to be a little bit careful, but in, with acne-like bumps, they, I think my guess is she says she doesn't use it all the time. My guess is she uses it when she's feeling more oily. Right. Or when she's breaking out. And it right. feels like she's doing something. There's almost a mask-like vibe to it is huh. my guess. Do you think it's bad for the skin though? I think it's a scrub, which I'm not a big fan of physical exfoliants, especially on rosacea skin. So this is compromised skin. Um, in general, rosacea has chronic inflammation and there are micro breaks in the skin and they just don't have a healthy skin barrier. So it makes it even harder for them to tolerate things that normal skin people would. Yeah. And so I think this was particularly harsh for her, her. and is probably worsening some degree of this like irritation and chronic inflammation that she has right. and making her breakout worse. All right, so let's see her next product. I'm using this Laneige Skin Toner for combination to oily skin. So she's using the Laneige Essential Power Skin Toner. I'm looking at the ingredients. I think she thinks she has extremely oily skin. I, in looking at, you know, the baking soda product prior to this, I think because of the acne and the inflammatory exactly. bumps, she believes she has to fall within that 16-year-old, really oily skin, teenage boy skin type. And yeah. I don't think it is. Like I said, I think you... And I think, Anna, your routine is complex and your, I think it's difficult to know, but I think you have inflammation without deep rooted oiliness. And I think these products are making you temporarily feel a little bit cleaned, astringent out, dried yeah, out. She's especially. trying, I mean, that's what, what I find when I'm talking to people like her is they're trying to literally dry out yeah. those pimples. But what you're saying is she's dealing with something that's not just a pimple. Like and she's they, not dealing with pimples, she's dealing with inflammation yeah and the chronic drying out is making it more Worse. red more inflamed and if she feels like she might be oily she might be causing the oiliness right because right? her oil glands are now overreacting to her stripping so it's like oh my god i need to make more oil it's a little bit of a horrible cycle like i feel badly like i think this product i'm just concerned about the alcohol content yeah. in it it's pretty high up on the ingredient list yeah and there's some fragrances and um things like that in there too yeah couple of humectants, but I don't yeah. see anything that jumps out as really anti-inflammatory, which I'd love to see her on. Yeah. I have two serums. Uh, the one that I that I usually use is this Niacinamide and Sync Serum by The Ordinary. Or when I'm feeling that my skin is a little bit dry, I use this Mutsin Power Essence by Cosrx. She just answered exactly what we were saying. So she's using that nice and I, I think that's great for her, right? I agree, because it, it controls sort of pore size and whether rosacea or acne, they tend to be dominant, especially central facially, with a little bit of prominent pore size. Uh -huh. It's such a texture. Like you've said before, niacinamide products are really easily incorporated into any skincare regimen, because mm -hmm. it's good for almost any skin type. Yeah. And I even like the zinc here. Zinc has anti-inflammatory properties. Yeah. Woo, something that's anti-inflammatory in her. So she said when I'm feeling dry, she'll use the Cosrx the Snail Mucin um, mm -hmm. Essence. So I think it's exactly what you're saying. She starts to strip her skin, but then she starts to get that tight feeling. Mm -hmm. So then she She's like, oh, I need to replenish it. So I'm gonna put on that snail mucin. And even though it says it's an essence, it's really sticky. That, that one specifically yeah. is very, very sticky. So it's that humectant that's sticky. Yeah, it's cause it's giving her a little bit of that sort of moisture absorbing vibe back after she stripped it away. But you can see how counterproductive that is. Like right. you are washing your face with really good cleansers, like we were happy with it. And then you are stripping all oils and then trying to kind of put it back. It's almost, like a waste of time. Like, let's just find things that are a little bit more gentle on your skin. And nor do I think, I think part of the stripping thing is it'll improve or dry out the acne. I think that's a little bit of, count, like it's counterintuitive, but I don't think you can dry out this type of acne at all. Right, if anything, it'll you're making it, it more red. Yeah. yeah. You're getting more redness just underlying, right? And the irritation. Moisturizer, I use this La roche Palais Tolerian Sensitive Fluid. And I put this Mario Badesque buffering lotion on my breakouts after that. I love that La Roche Posay Tolerian. Me too. I'm a huge fan of Tolerian fluid. It's really a gentle, lightweight moisturizer. Yep. Works with almost any skin type. Yeah, I, I take it in all of my travel, like my whenever I'm traveling, yeah. I take that moisturizer with me because I feel like if 
I don't know why. It's like when you go into a different climate and stuff, you're like not sure how your skin's gonna react. Yeah. And I know I can always use that moisturizer. You're right, because it's not too heavy or too light. It's kind of like it, it will adapt yeah. itself. And if I'm like getting irritated or I got like some kind of a sunburn, <laughs> even though I should be using my SPF and all that kind of stuff. Like if anything's happened to my skin, like maybe I was like sleeping on some, you know, sheets at a hotel mm -hmm. that had something that made my skin react, something like that, I always know I can use that moisturizer. What I think is so interesting is that the Telerian line is made for sensitive skin. She saw it on the, you, you saw it on the bottle yeah. when she showed it. So here she is telling herself that she has oily skin in certain products. And now when she gets to the moisturizer, she's like, I, f I, I think she's noticing her skin is irritated and inflamed. By that point. By that point, yeah. exactly. So she has what, I mean, I would venture to say is a confused skincare regimen. Mm -hmm. Like she's like, am I oily? Am I sensitive? Because they typically don't come together that often. Yep. So it, I think that there's a little confusion here. Yep. But that particular product is great. The La Roche brand in general is pretty gentle yeah. on sensitive skin types. But especially that Tularian line, yes. right? Yeah. I think that that one's a really good one. And then she goes into that Mario Badescu buffering lotion, which is, the first thing is it's it's an alcohol, yeah. a drying alcohol, right? I would say that one mm -hmm. is. And then it's got zinc oxide. He's nice in my glycerin. Interesting. I actually didn't expect it to be that. I thought it was going to end up being like kind of like their spot treatment, but it's a little bit different. What do you think of this product? I actually don't know what I think of this product. I'm not sure of it. It seems like a gentler version of their the drying. their spot treatment, which is a really well known product. I I don't know. I I think. Is she saying she uses a spot treatment or yeah. all over? She's it's a, a spot, spot where she's breaking out. Yeah. Um. I don't like the alcohol on her skin. I Again, don't. it's about that skin barrier that's like totally compromised. That's why she has so much erythema or redness. So I'm not a big fan just because of the alcohol component. I, I think she might do better in this case. This is when I think it's worth seeing a dermatologist because I think she may need a prescription strength product that yeah. balances those things to treat the actual inflamed bumps versus yeah. an over-the-counter spot treatment, which Got are it. more effective for just drying it out. Yeah. In the morning, I start with the same cleanser by Cetaphil and follow it with the same toner by Laneige. Then I use this salicylic acid serum by The Ordinary. So we already know, so she's using, using Cetaphil, totally fine. Yep, right? yep, happy she, with that. She uses that Especially Laneige. in the morning. Yeah, she uses that Laneige where we're just kind of like, why alcohol yeah. on the skin? Not necessary, but yeah. she probably wants that second step to feel totally cleaned. Mm -hmm. um, but especially in the morning, you definitely don't need that. You don't make that much oil in an average environment overnight because you're yeah. just sleeping. Yeah. Um, and then she's going to go into that 2% salicylic acid. It's kind of like a serum mm -hmm. um, from The Ordinary. What do you think of that for her skin type? I think salicylic acid is a little bit harsh for someone with as much underlying redness yep. as her. My guess is there's going to be... she. She's making little micro tears and I'm shocked that she's not more irritated or complaining of stinging with this kind of routine. But over time, my guess is that's gonna happen. Got it. She might have just like 21 year old resilient skin right now. Yeah, but I think it's going to get less resilient over time with this barrage of dry ingredients. Yeah. Again, salicylic acid, Great for classic acne, yeah. a little bit less good for something so inflamed, yeah. I think. The salicylic acid, it, does it also go back to she thinks that she's an oily skin, she thinks that she's got actual yeah. acne acne. Absolutely. I think that this is just somebody who's struggling to identify her own skin type. She sees pimples, she thinks oily, she thinks salicylic acid. It does seem really, frankly, logical, but I just think it's a little trickier in yep. her. Got it. And then I follow it with one of these moisturizers. This one is a gel by Sebamed uh, for oily and problematic skin. It contains hyaluronic acid and aloe vera. Uh, and this is um, a vein tolerance emulsion for sensitive skin. There she goes, I, I, right? Confused again. Right. Yeah. Am I sensitive? Am I oily? Yeah. Like the usual acne patient cannot tolerate and I really like that Aven I do too. Tolerian product, but they can't tolerate that. That would be too heavy for an average oily skinned acne person. Right. I think she's and has she to uses put it. it. Look at that. That yeah, tube it's is used. Like she is using that stuff. So I think she's again replenishing stuff she's stripping away. I think she does identify with the fact that she's sensitive yeah. and a little irritable. And that but that but she's also torn between that and her right. acne. Because she's got that Sabamed 
where she's like, and it's a gel, it's a gel moisturizer. So she's some days she's like, I'm really oily, I'm gonna just use a gel moisturizer. Right. Which is not a true moisturizer. And in a couple days, she's totally dried out and needs this to calm everything down because she's so irritated. Not just dry, but irritated, irritated is my guess, yeah. And then, so this is her morning which leads me to believe also she doesn't want to have like flakiness or something if she is gonna wear any makeup or oh, something. Oh, good point, yeah. So that's yeah. why she's going with a thicker moisturizer as well. For my SPF, I'm using this Essence Sun Milk SPF 50 by Misha. And for an eye cream, I have this CeraVe eye cream. Thank you very much for watching. She is so she's adorable. So cute. Um, I love that Misha uh, SPF. Mm -hmm. It feels very light. It's very milky. Feels like nothing on the yeah. skin. So lightweight. Yeah. And it's a great SPF with both UVA and UVB coverage. Uh -huh. I'm totally happy with that on yeah, her. Yeah, same. And the CeraVe eye cream, morning, I think totally fine for her too, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a little preventative. It's a really gentle one with ceramides, which will replenish some of that skin barrier that we keep talking about with her. So I think that's a good product too for her. So, you know, I, I think I'm gonna defer to the professional about her morning and nighttime skincare routine. She's got a, a really, really tough one. Yeah. And it's more, when I say tough, it's more that I feel for you, Anna, because I feel like this is one where you're gonna have to do a lot of trial and error, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think that maybe seeing a professional or dermatologist to sort of treat the underlying inflammation will be really helpful here. In general, I feel like you already identified yourself of having two very different skin types, sensitive and oily. Those are the two things you tend to like lean towards and they're actually on opposite spectrums almost of each other. So something is not jiving and it sounds to me like it might be more of this acne rosacea type of thing. So I think less is more on her, less stripping products, gentle cleansers like Cetaphil, gentle moisturizers, no alcohol-based products. Be good to your skin barrier, which means maybe investing in a better, like a pH balancing essence if you want that step. But I think the moisturizers that you're choosing, which is the La Roche and the Aven, are both actually really good for your type of skin. So she's choosing the right moisturizer. Yeah. But I think what's missing here is a treatment product. And I think that's because you don't really have a true diagnosis yet. And I think maybe this is the time where, you know, not just because I'm a dermatologist, but I think someone could really help you if they saw it in person or were able to ask a few more questions. Or like you said, it might just take a little bit of trial and error to find that balance yeah. between a little bit of overreactive skin and also treating the acne at the same time. Yeah. You know, this is so, when I get messages from people all the time that are dealing with stuff that Anna's dealing with, that are dealing with stuff that, you know, just uh, completely other things. But what I tend to find in this situation is that they'll tell me they went to a dermatologist once. Mm -hmm. like she did maybe a year ago, and then they tried something that didn't work for them, and then they just kind of moved on from it. Yeah. What do you think of that kind of the situation? Because then they'll be like, I don't know if I trust dermatologists. I saw a dermatologist, they said this to me and it was stupid. What do you think about that? It's hard. I always try to tell everyone that when the FDA actually approves a medication as being, let's use acne as the example, as being effective for acne, they're looking for 50%, 5-0 improvement at month three. That's month three. really slow and really not that improved. Half better at month three. Most of us are not happy with that. I'm not happy with that, the patient's not happy with it. But you have to realize what's realistic and you have to keep continuing to follow up. So, you know, my approach with someone like this is a little bit of closer follow-up at the beginning. You almost need a cheerleader to be like, you know, that's what, it's not gonna go away overnight. Let's get through this. You've had it for a couple years. I'm not gonna cure your acne in two weeks if you had it for two years. That's kind of get together and figure out what works best for you. So I think patience is really a virtue here when it comes to skincare. Nothing Unfortunately, works. Unfortunately, which is, you know. None of us have. Yeah. But it's the truth. If you vibe really well with your dermatologist, then continue to see them and let them know what you're frustrated by. Maybe it's not working fast enough for you. Maybe you don't like the way the products feel. Maybe you don't feel heard, whatever it is. If you don't vibe with them, you know, everyone has a different type of personality then go seek a second opinion. But I think the important thing is to not give up on seeking help with a dermatologist because there are prescription products that I think would really be beneficial and probably make the rest of her skincare regimen simpler. I think you just can't achieve what she might want to with over-the-counter products. Right, like the only products I think I would keep for her are the cleansing balm from Clinique to remove her makeup at night, mm -hmm. the Cetaphil, and probably that La Roche-Posay Tolarian. Yeah. Oh, and the niacinamide from The, the Ordinary. And the Aven, the Aven product. Product is not you think, bad. You is don't it? think that's too rich for someone who struggles with feeling like she's maybe a little oily? I don't because I think that it could really help improve her skin barrier a little yeah. bit. Like maybe 
the problem is she's just got too much stripping happening and so she might see a big difference if she's not stripping her skin. Exactly. When you first cut out products, know that you may have a flare. So that's something that I think is really hard for people to deal with. So she may blame it on cutting out the products, but the truth is changing anything immediately can make you flare. So if you're going to cut out products, give it a little bit of time, like three, four weeks, see if the skin can calm down and then sort of go from there in terms of adding new products. I think having what I call product schizophrenia, like jumping back and forth between products here, is actually the worst thing you can do. Yeah, especially for her skin type where yeah. she gets inflammation and irritation easily. So easily, yeah. yeah. But you're right, once she gets her inflammation and irritation under control, that moisturizer, the Aven one, might become a little bit too much for her. But until she gets there, I think she needs it to kind of bring back the moisture. That's good to know. Yeah. That's really, really good to know. Is there anything besides going to a dermatologist that she could probably add right now? For now, I think you can look for cleansers or acne products that are sulfa based. I think sulfa, okay. those things can decrease inflammation and redness pretty quickly. And you may find there are less stripping versions that have anti-inflammatory effects versus just drying something out. That makes sense. All right. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for, for being here. This one was really, like for me especially, was very educational because this is something that I really do think an expert has to yeah. look at. And like you said, you know, you need somebody probably in person yeah. to look at you. And that's where this can get a little bit difficult. But I feel like, I feel like there was a lot to take away from it too. Yeah. I think the big thing here is not all acne is the same, that you can have acne on sensitive skin and not all acne is on oily skin. So don't always just assume that. I think there's inflammation of a different type here. That's get you better. But I think that, you know, the good news is there's no scarring or any type of thing like that. So as long as you get the inflammation under control, I'm sure you'll be on a good path. I love it. Thank you so much, Dr. Chu. And then you guys, if you want to send in your skincare regimen, there's information below in the description box. You can find us on Facebook in our private Facebook group. And you know, just ask some questions if you want, because we'll answer. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.